Hi class, let's do some linear algebra. Today we're going to talk about our motivation for change of basis. For example, by now we know that vector spaces have multiple bases. The question is, why is that a useful thing to know? For example, we have the set Uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. This is the standard basis for R2. But we also know that this set, consisting of the vectors 2, 3, and negative 1, 1, also forms a basis. And this is because, of course, we can just quickly find the determinant of this matrix. It's so going to be 1 by 2 minus negative 1 by 3. This is 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1, which is not equal to 0. That means that these two vectors are linearly independent and so form a two-dimensional space and thus must uh, span all of R2. All right, so the standard basis is kind of nice. This other basis is kind of random. Why would we ever want to use the second basis? Let's do an example. Example. Say we've got a town with 10,000 puppies. And let's be a little bit more specific. We know some things. 8,000 of them are in homes. and 2,000 are in shelters. We also know something about the patterns of adoption. So every year, we know that 30% of the puppies with homes are dropped off at shelters. And we know that 20% of sheltered puppies get adopted. The question that you might have is, what happens in the long run? With these patterns of adoption and dropping puppies off at shelters, like what happens in the long run to all of these puppies? Here's what we can do. We can represent this with matrices and matrix multiplication. So for example, we can set up our initial vector that S0 is in the starting situation. Um, that represents how many puppies there are in our initial state. So there are going to be 8,000 puppies in homes and 2,000 puppies in shelters. And we're representing it in this vector. So this is our initial state. And then we can represent what happens year over year with matrix multiplication. So say we've got our initial state. Um, we want to know what happens after a year. So we've got 0.7. We've got 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.8. So this is going to be, we're going to call this the matrix A. Here is our S0. And this matrix over here, which is going to be a two by one matrix, is going to represent what happens after one year. So we're going to call this S1, which is the situation after one year. All right, so this is going to be 0 0.7 times 8,000 plus the 20% of puppies um, in shelters that get, get adopted. Um, then we're going to 0 0.3 times 8,000 plus 0 0.8 times 2,000. This is the sheltered puppies that stay sheltered. And this tells us that after one year, we've got 
the sum and this sum. So we've got 6,000 and 4,000. And of course, this represents the number of puppies in homes and the number of puppies in shelters after one year. This is our vector S1. All right. So we kind of know what happens next. If we were to ask the same question, what happens in the long run? We can say, okay, after two years, the way we figure that out is we multiply by the matrix A twice. After three years, multiply three times, etc., and then we can keep multiplying and hope that there's a pattern. Or we can do something more intentional. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to change our basis from our standard basis, 1, 0, 0, 1, to our non-standard basis, 2, 3, negative 1, 1. And we're going to notice that our initial state vector is just going to be represented as 8,000 times E1 plus 2,000 times E2. But we can also represent it in terms of our new basis. This is going to be 2,000 times 2, 3, plus, excuse me, minus 4,000 times negative 1, 1. And here's what I want you to note about this. A times the vector 2, 3 is, again, the vector 2, 3. A times the vector negative 1, 1 is a half times the vector negative 1, 1. As an exercise, please check these. Check these two multiplications. Okay, let's see what this allows us to do. After n years, the situation is going to be a to the n times our initial state vector. We know how to uh, we're just going to multiply through by a n. Our scalars can come in front. And here we've expressed S O, our initial state vector, in terms of our second basis. We know that a times the vector 2, 3 is just 2, 3. So it doesn't matter how many times we multiply by a, we're just going to get the vector 2, 3. We know that... We know that uh, a times the vector negative 1, we know that a times the vector negative 1, 1 is the vector, well, the same vector times a half. So if you multiply by a n times, we're going to get a half to the n. And so we can see easily here that as n goes to infinity, half to the n goes to 0. And so a n times the initial state vector is going to go to 2,000 to 3, which is just 4,000, 6,000. In the long run, there are going to be 4,000 puppies in homes and 6,000 puppies in shelters. Here's the idea. The perspective gained uh, by using a new basis makes certain problems easy to solve. So here's what we're going to do later. Later, we're going to talk about how to find the vectors that we used. Two, three, and negative one, one. 
These are called eigenvectors. Next, we're going to talk about how to find the coefficients. So 8,000, 2,000. This was 2,000 times 2, 3 minus 4,000 times negative 1, 1. We're going to talk about how to find these coefficients 2,000 and 4,000 so that we can change basis. Think on this. See you next time.